pea production is a dynamic and rapidly expanding livestock subsector in Uganda and Vietnam, driven by a myriad of factors. Notably, the rising demand for pork, a typical Vietnamese consumes some 25 kilograms of pork per year, while a Ugandan consumes nearly 4 kilograms of pork per year. In both countries, pig production is largely informal with the majority of pigs raised under a smallholder backyard system. It provides livelihood to 8 million Vietnamese households and 1.1 million Ugandan households, contributing at least a quarter of income that households generate from livestock. The pig sectors of both countries are similar in structure, though the Vietnam sector is quite advanced with a population of pigs 10 times that of Uganda and a per capita consumption 7 times that of Uganda. Pork is generally procured in wet markets. Fresh pork is the most preferred form of pork product among consumers in both countries. There is a small but growing demand for processed pork products sold in modern outlets in urban areas. We present the two case studies comparing the contribution of smallholder pig production in pork supply using a multi-market model framework. The case study is will showcase the contribution and competitiveness of smallholder pig production systems and their growth trajectories under various policy scenarios. We apply a partial equilibrium model to simulate the evolution of the smallholder pig sector over time and highlight key drivers and their policy implications. By applying the multi packet model framework in the pig sector of both countries, we generate evidence to answer a series of questions, but notably among them is how will shifts in pork demand influence pig producers, particularly small-scale producers, that is to say, Will small-scale pig producers be squeezed out of their market? The model has several characteristics. It's a partial equilibrium model that focuses only on maize and pig sector. It does not capture all other sectors in the economy. It's partial in that it simulates markets in eight regions of Vietnam and five in Uganda. It is recursive dynamic in that it simulates over 10 years with growth in income, population and production technology. The model covers four commodities. Maize, fresh pork sold in rural wheat markets produced by traditional producers, fresh pork sold in urban peri-urban wheat markets produced by commercially oriented producers, and processed pork sold in formal market outlets including supermarkets produced by large modern producers. Nine policy scenarios were simulated as follows. One, a baseline scenario. Two, where there is higher per capita income growth. Three, where there is no technology growth in the traditional pig sector. Four, where there is higher technology growth in the traditional pig sector. Five, where there is higher technology growth in both commercial and modern pig sector. Six, where there is no technology growth in the maize sector. Seven, where there is higher income elasticity for commercial and modern pork products. Eight, where there is higher income elasticity for products of, of and higher technology growth in commercial and modern pig sector. And lastly, the worst case scenario for traditional pig sector, where there is zero technology growth. These were the key findings. In Uganda, traditional pig sector will retain dominant market share in fresh pork market, except in worst case scenario of no technology growth in traditional sector. In Vietnam, traditional pig sector will maintain dominant market share in fresh pork markets. Modern pig sector captures dominant market share for fresh pork under scenarios of higher 
technology growth and income elasticity for commercial and modern products and in worst case scenario of new technology growth in traditional sector. These are the policy implications. Policies to foster productivity growth in the commercially oriented pig sector will increase their market share without squeezing out the traditional pig sector. Technology breakthroughs that will benefit all will be preferable for developing the pig sectors in these countries. We will conclude by posing a couple of questions. Question 1. Does the approach taken that is the use of multi-market and partial equilibrium model adequately address the research inquiry? Question 2. Do the findings lead to actionable policy insights?